This is Spetsis taking the boat today to Hydra once again. Quite a scene here, everybody waiting for ferries. Time to munch on a turkey with cheese and tomato and arugula sandwich before catching the boat. And it looks like this might be my boat. Let's find out. Yep, this is it, the Speed Cat 1. Going back to Hydra, I will explain why once I get there. And we're off. Let's do a little boat tour. Not very full. It will probably be a lot fuller once we stop at Idra, and then a lot of people will probably get on going back to Piraeus. Goodbye, Spetses. It was great. Really nice island. I recommend it. May I have a venture, please? Passenger with the name Babula Leila and Cohen Melis. I can request to proceed to the personal office. Thank you. Ooh, can we go outside? Let's take a look. All right, all right. Should I say running if we're a cat? Had an interesting day yesterday taking a motorbike all the way around the island. Some great beaches, some nice hiking, went to a great restaurant on the other side, and the main town here is really cool. A lot to see. There is the uh, mermaid over there that I showed at the very end of the last video. Okay. I'm back on Hydra. As many of you will know, I was here a few days ago. I stayed here for three days, coming from Piraeus, the port of Athens, straight here. And then after three days, I went to Spetsis there, spent three nights there, and was trying to decide my plans after that. I was planning to head back this general direction and then I will be going out to the Cacladis Islands, a whole different uh, group of islands, but you have to go back to Athens 
in order to get out there, there are no boats going from here across. So I have to backtrack. And I wanted to stop in Poros on the way back, another uh, nice looking island that is about 30 minutes from here. But I decided to stop at Hydra again because it is on the way and I feel like I didn't do it justice the last time that I was here. I made several videos, but both times I went that way on my bicycle. Now the reason that I went that way on my bicycle is because this is the Greek island where all wheeled vehicles are banned. I thought that it was only cars banned, cars and motorbikes. And then I wheeled my wheeled bicycle off of the ferry the first time and discovered when a policeman came up to me that bicycles are also sort of banned, but it isn't quite a hard ban, they sort of tolerate it. And so he said, lock your bike over here and you can take it away from the town, just don't uh, take it through town. Since he said, lock the bike over here, I didn't want to wheel it through town and go that way. And so that is why I went that way both days. Now, as you will have seen if you saw those videos then, it was an interesting uh, day of exploring the first one, especially because we had nicer weather and I went along the coast. The second day, I went up and over to the top of the mountain on the bike and discovered the garbage dump of the island. It was a cloudy day, not ideal conditions, and it was okay but not all that pretty or anything. But I realized that there's a reason why most of the tourists are going that way, which is because that is the more beautiful side of the island and I wanted to show it. And especially since we have here a perfect sunny day ultimate Greek islands experience. I wanted to stop again and make one more video showing that other side of the island. So I have the uh, quandary of, two quandaries actually. First of all, what to do with the big backpack and I haven't 100% decided, but I might just lug it along with me. I could lock it up with my bike lock that I have there and it would be 99.5% secure, damn near 100%. Nobody's going to touch it around here. This is super low crime. It's just tourists and locals here who are not going to mess with something. And besides, it would still be locked anyways. But that will still leave me concerned thinking about it as I'm walking out that way and just a little bit stressed coming back wondering if it's still going to be there. So I might just uh, haul the backpack, the big one and the little one, with me as I walk in that direction. I'm going to leave the uh, bicycle locked there. Now the other uh, quandary that I have is which ferry to take. So I am only here for the afternoon. I am going next to Poros today. I have a hotel reserved on Poros Island for the next two nights, tonight and tomorrow night. There are two ferries leaving after now going to Poros. It is currently 1.05 in the afternoon. The next ferry is at 3 p.m. And then the next one after that is at 6.30. So that's a little bit awkward because only two hours feels like it might be not enough time. Whereas leaving at 6.30 might be a bit more time than I want to spend here. And that gets me to Poros, you know, a little bit uh, later in the evening around like 7 15 or so so what i did is i bought a ticket for both ferries they are 19 euros each for those other ferries 35 40 minutes uh, ferry ride i decided that it was worth 20 dollars to have the assurance that i can take either one if i don't book either one because i want to hold out and see which one i want to take then i run the risk of the ferry being already booked out, even though that is unlikely, as you saw that uh, boat there was barely full, but you never know, especially coming from Idra, could be more full going back towards Piraeus. So I don't want to count on buying the ticket later and then the ticket isn't available. 
but I also didn't want to lock myself into one or the other. Maybe I want to stay longer. Maybe it's rainy and I want to get out of here and get to my hotel room in Poro. So I decided that it was worth spending an extra $20, so $20 each, and buying both tickets, having them both reserved, and then I can just make my choice. Once I'm out there, if I'm enjoying myself sitting on the beach and uh, in no rush, then I can just hold off and catch the 631. If two hours feels like enough and I want to get over to Poros, then uh, I take the one at uh, three o'clock. So that is the deal. Going to uh, put the backpack on my back, walk over here. First mission, find a milk. For me, it is the uh, perfect uh, drink after like a dry sandwich. And ponder whether I'm going to continue hiking along with the backpack. And I will show a bit of the town once again for those who didn't see the last videos. Really, really pleasant, beautiful, peaceful, classic Greek islands town here. And as you can see up ahead, we have the four-legged creatures parked like cars. So here on Hydra, the only automobiles allowed are the garbage trucks and the emergency vehicles. Over there is a red pickup truck that's a fire truck. And then other than that, people just get around by mostly walking and also the horses and mules and donkeys. So it's an island ban on all wheeled vehicles. So that's why it includes the bicycles. But apparently, there's an exception for carts with wheels, I guess. Okay, this is the uh, milk spot. There we go, that is the good stuff there. The hard milk, the 3.7. None of this silly, low-fat stuff for me. So, uh, where I stayed the, uh, Last time that I was here was kind of up there on the hill. Amazing view from up there, very uh, nice hotel and room. As you can see, very nice restaurants. Not exactly cheap for Greece. Hydra is known as being one of the more expensive islands, but uh, for good reason, as you can see, it is just an absolutely spectacular spot here. Really like the perfect Greek islands town. So, going to relax here for a little bit, sip on the milk, consider my options even though I know my options are ready. Basically they were either leave the backpack, the big one, locked to the bike, or leave it with a restaurant around here somewhere, or take it with me. And at this point I'm feeling inclined to go ahead and haul it around. I'm not planning to cover a bunch of distance anyways and like hike for miles up that way basically just going to wander that way a little bit and uh, probably just like find a good spot to take a swim and then I can just set everything down and enjoy the crystal clear waters of Hydra. All right, so let's get walking this way. In one of my videos, then I walked around the corner here and so the idea is to walk much further. 
or at least a little further. So I wanted to uh, answer a possible question, which is, what about the new shirt? Where'd it come from? Very colorful, as you can see. So uh, many of you will remember my friends Christos and Nicole, who live on the Greek island of Paros. I visited them last year, as well as in 2016, on Paros Island. Christos is Greek, Nicole is from England. They're a married couple. And Nicole is an artist who has a clothing shop online in which she takes her art that she's painted, her very beautiful, creative, and kind of otherworldly paintings, and then utilizing online technology has it put onto clothing, men's and women's, I think mostly women's, dresses and blouses and skirts and a lot of different things. And so she uh, had this made for me and just sent it to me for free. Mailed it to the United States and then I picked it up there when I was back in the US about a month ago. So if you wanna see some more of her art and her clothing, I will put a link down below the video to her Instagram page. Check it out. Really, really cool stuff. A very nice looking swimming spot right there. But I'm going to continue around the corner there. See what's there. This is sort of the suburbs of Idra town. Idra or Hydra. Another nice swimming spot there, it looks like. Oh man, that water is looking so freaking nice. And then another great uh, restaurant in the shade there. So, uh, I am definitely glad that I made the choice to uh, stop here again because this is really the nice area. Walking along here, coming to another little harbor, it looks like. And then sort of neighborhoods back there. Oh, and there's a uh, castle. What a great spot to have lunch. Probably this is more in the evening when the sun goes down and then otherwise you can sit under the shade there. Codilenias. So this is almost like a separate village here. I didn't see any of this the last time. A bit of a construction zone here. Let's continue the walk. At this point, I'm feeling inclined to likely take the earlier boat at three. Get over to Poros, my 41st island and have some time there to uh, explore or edit whatever I decide to do. Also then, I get it done without waiting for the last boat, even though on a day like this, probably no problems, but uh, still, last boat is always, you know, a little bit of a stressor, especially when you have a hotel reservation and I have a really nice hotel there that I'm looking forward to seeing. So, uh, as you can tell, it is a village that has been here for quite a long time. I wonder if those bikes are actually in use. Seems like they've been parked there for a while. Okay, let's look around the corner here and I'm hoping that uh, there will be a good swimming spot here that is less crowded than the other ones because I am dying to get in that water. Well, I see somebody in the water, so 
Must be a swimming spot there, yep. Looks like it, not exactly private. I think it's more crowded than the other ones. Little Pebble Beach. Let's see what the options are. I don't mind jumping off the rocks. Maybe right down there is a good spot. And then from here, that looks like a great hike continuing that way. But that's where the backpack definitely becomes a real drag. This water is perfect. Look at that. So yes, I'm definitely going to take the three o'clock boat. I have about an hour. Gives me time to relax here for a little bit. 15 minutes or so, walk back and then Oro. So some people have asked, what about sharks? Are you scared of sharks in the water here? Especially after the recent unfortunate shark attack in which a Russian tourist was killed in Hurghada, Egypt. Now that was in, I think, is it the Red Sea there? I don't know if maybe there are more sharks there in general or it was just a, you know, freak thing or something. But I think that there was another shark attack there as well in that area sometime in the past year. I looked online once about shark attacks in Greece and apparently the last shark attack and I think that that person even survived was in the 1960s that I found in the waters of Greece. So it is just ridiculously rare, almost just impossible. And so you really just don't have to worry about it. There are sharks in the Mediterranean, but uh, I guess they're smaller ones that aren't likely to bite people and they're also just farther out in deeper waters. Nice to see a few fish down there. Some little ones and some a little bit bigger ones. Looks like I'm back just in time. I think that that is my boat there. Arrow one. Yeah. Next island, Poros. See ya.